Welcome to Taking Healthy Back with Maria with your host, Maria Malik, experience coach, conscience educator, and destination retreat host presents to you countless ways to overcome an overwhelmed, overprocessed, and overmedicated lifestyle. She'll be covering everything wellness from getting more from life than you put into it, destination retreats to healthy cooking and conscious education. So please welcome the host of Taking Healthy Back with Maria. Welcome back to Taking Healthy Back with Maria. I'm your host, Maria Malik. Today we're talking with Andre Baptiste, or as we know him on social media, Andre the Farmer. Our, our theme today is Rooted in Sustainability, How to Grow a Greener Future. Andre, I, I found him uh, several months back, and I was intrigued by what he teaches everyone. We're going to have a conversation today about how he creates a permaculture life through gardening and food forest tips and techniques. He does cooking and investigating what and how to grow your garden and life in a sustainable manner and dig deeper into how our gardens can impact the greater world. And you know, here at Taking Healthy Back, this is the place where you're going to gain a better awareness about how your environment affects you and what it takes and what it means to sustain wellness. Welcome, Andre. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, I'm excited about all my guests because I feel that when I discover someone new, I just want to share who they are and what they do if it's going to impact their life in a better way. And so far, everything that I've seen and watched, I've learned a lot from you and you make it simple. You make it simple for the everyday person. Um, So tell us a little bit about how you, you know, became Andre the farmer. (laughs) Well, you know, it's my origin story is kind of simple. I, I, want to grow a mango tree. I didn't know anything about fruit trees or gardening at all. So about eight, nine years ago, I planted a mango tree. And, you know, once you sort of get something from that you grew yourself and you get to eat it, you know, there's there's a certain amount of thrill that comes with that. At least it did for me. And um, after that, I wanted more. So, you know, I planted another mango tree and then an avocado tree and then a lychee tree. And then, you know, it just kept going from there, you know, bananas. And then pretty much, pretty soon anything I could get, I would be, I'd just stick in the ground, you know. And that's kind of my philosophy for beginning gardeners is just get stuff in the ground and start to get some returns on things. You know, things are going to die. Things are not going to work out, but you're going to learn from every bit of it. So get stuff in the ground. You know, too many times people are just, you know, they're paralyzed with, um, planning, right? They're planning, planning, planning. They, they want to know everything before they start. You know, get it in the ground, learn about it later. That's my philosophy. I was so excited when I grew my first potato. And I mean, <laughs> a potato is probably potatoes, maybe ginger, are like the easiest things to grow. You just take, <laughs> you know, the the fruit of what was, and you put it in the in the ground. So yeah. I love that idea. Um, where did you learn everything? Did you get formal training or did you self-teach yourself everything? It's pretty much self-taught. I'm still learning every day. Um, you know, I'll post videos sometimes and someone will tell me, oh, well, you know, that you could do it this way is better or, or this is, you should do it like this. And I, so I post a video and I'll post a video next year doing it better because I learned from someone, somebody else who was watching it. Um, a lot of my video, a lot of my stuff that I learned, I learned on YouTube. Um, at the time, I wasn't on TikTok. Um, I didn't have an Instagram, um, mm-hmm. so it was a lot was YouTube and um, just watching a lot of. I'd watch every single Florida food forest permaculture video that I could find. I would just watch all of them, um, you know, and I'd just always be refreshing and checking the dates to see if anything new came up, and um, that's pretty much where I learned a lot of stuff. And then once you get on social media, you meet other people and you learn from them as well. So so that's pretty much it. Right. And that's basically how I found you. I guess, you know, the more you watch someone, the more they come up in your feed 
And um, you, you mentioned that a lot, you know, social media is a double-edged sword. You could either like get lost in it and stupid mm -hmm. crap, or like you said, you can learn stuff. And, right. and that's, that's what I've been doing. And, you know, sometimes you think people on social media are untouchable. And I said, well, what do I have to lose? The guy, all he can do is say no. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I reached out to you and I figure if it's meant to be, it'll be. So you got a lot going on. And I want to talk about some of these incredible things that you're doing. First of all, you're, you do a lot of education and you, you have started school gardens. Tell us about that. Yeah. So we have a couple schools that we do gardens in. Um, one of them is an element. Well, they're both elementary schools. Um, one of them, we built the garden pretty much from scratch and, um, it's great. They have a garden club for the kids. So we go there a couple of times a month and the kids have a garden club those days and they come out and they get to pick, you know, vegetables and things that they're growing. You know, we're getting, we're going to get, we're going to start putting some trees in there as well. So for the long term, we'll have fruit there as well. Um, and then the other one is another, is a community garden, but we do have a elementary school really close. So, um, they, the kids come over there and they have their own garden club there as well. So um, that's what we do with the community gardens. Um, you know, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Uh, my company, Permaculture Life, we fund that. So permaculturelife.com, um, $1 from every purchase goes towards our community gardens. So, um, you know, we, we definitely enjoy that. That's one of the highlights of, of my day. I was there this morning, actually, at the community garden. So at the school, you said, they only have the club twice a month. Who's keeping up? Do you go periodically to keep up with the garden? No, not for, not for the one that we started from scratch. The teachers and like the students, they'll still go out and water things. And, and you know, but whenever we're doing anything major, it'll be on the days when I'm there. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You also have something called plant to heal. That interests me. What what is that? Is that actual planting, or are you planting seeds for wellness? What what is that? Well, Plant the Heal is not my company. That is um, a friend of mine, um, Erica. Oh, okay. um, Erica Plants. That's her company. So yeah, so I, I'm not. Um, you know, we're friends, but I'm not affiliated with the company. I I bought seeds oh. from on that website, but it's not my company. Gotcha. I thought that was something that you collaborated with, um, but it. Sounds like someone I need to get on here. Yeah. Oh, she has and amazing. And interview sense. her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you should definitely get her on the show. You should definitely get her on the show. She is so knowledgeable and she's got amazing seeds. Um, and you know, she's got a big bubbly personality. She she would be great. She would be great. All right, great. Is there anything else you're doing in the community um, to foster this greener culture? Um, you know, I do speak in schools periodically and um sometimes i go i don't know if you know my other profession is i'm an orthodontist um that's my day you're job. an orthodontist yeah that's my day job yeah wow <laughs> so 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 we have like in my office we have like 40 schools that we're partners in education with so most of the time when i'm going to the schools i'm going as dr baptiste but then sometimes wow. now we switch it up and sometimes I'm Andre the farmer, you know, so I'll go into school and, you know, do a grafting demo or do things like that. So those are things that we do. What's grafting? Oh, that's when you take like a branch from one tree and you add it to another tree. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what exactly does permaculture mean? Maybe someone doesn't even know what that means. Right. That's a very, tricky phrase because it means a lot of things to a lot of different people but you know i think it's, it's intimidating for a lot of people because they think that it's it's a, a whole process and a technique that you have to do right but mm -hmm. for me permaculture really is anything that you are doing that is sustainable so if you take you know your used you know butter dish or something like that and you put up yeah. some soil in it put a plant in it or an egg carton you're doing permaculture, you're repurposing something, you're using something. This is all something that's sustainable. So the whole, you know, permaculture, the phrase was coined by Bill Mollison in Australia. And he basically wanted to create a way to create permanent agriculture because he saw the way that we were sort of, the big industrial farming was going on and food production 
um, was basically, you know, taking all the nutrients out of the land. It was stripping the land. And after a few mm. years, the land is pretty much useless. It's stripped of all its nutrients. Um, everything's a monoculture, just one crop. So basically, right. he wanted to create a way to do permanent agriculture. And the way that he saw it was in nature, you know, in, in the forest. Nobody's, you know, doing stuff to the forest, but the forest maintains itself as a cycle and it keeps going. So he wanted to grow food the way plants would naturally grow in nature. So mm. instead of fighting nature, you're going to you know, use nature to your advantage and cooperate with nature, you know. You know, if you have a water down at the bottom of the hill, you're not going to pump water all the way up to the top of the hill. You're going to grow the plants at the bottom of the hill that need the water, right? Um, right. You know, when you plant a tree, you're going to think about the other uses for this tree. Can this tree be a trellis? Can this tree provide partial shade for plants that need shade? Um, you know, like banana plants, like they don't grow in the middle of a field naturally, right? So they grow in shade they're an understory plant so that should be a lower level of your system it shouldn't be just a bunch of trees all by themselves so um permaculture is about basically emulating nature because nature is sustainable and it is permanent and if we can grow in that manner then we can grow things sustainably and permanently yeah. like my food forest gets more and more nutrient rich over time it doesn't lose nutrients it just gains right. nutrients well, and I and I guess logically, well, logically to me that when those plants die, they um, add nutrients from what they were back into the ground. And um, when I learned about the what's under the ground and the network of the root system and fungus and all that, like yep. it blew me away. Maybe not to the point where you know I'm going to be Maria the farmer. But um, I'm definitely going like I, I'm definitely on that course of respecting nature and how it grows. And I, I just think that's so beautiful. I never really heard permaculture explained in that manner. And I don't know, it's romantic to me to, to, <laughs> to hear that, you know. So you talked about food for it. Forest fooding or food foresting? Food what forest. is that? Uh, What's well, a term that I sort of came across early on when I was gardening? Because when I first started gardening, I had no idea what I was doing. I'd buy a mango tree, stick in the spot. Then I'd buy another mango tree, I'd be, you know, like 20 feet away. That looks about right. Put another mango tree. And I was basically doing things in a bit of an orchard style. Um, and then once I learned more about a food forest and permaculture, um, the goal is to create a totally sustainable system that you don't have to put a lot of inputs or a lot of care into because it's growing like a forest wood, right? So you're not in there pruning and watering and doing all this stuff. You're letting nature sort of run its course. Um, and so most of the stuff that I planted after the initial planting, once I learned about it, is done in a more forest style. So if you came to my garden, you'd be able to definitely see the trees that were originally planted and you can see the trees that are you know sort of pre or pre and post um learning about permaculture okay um do you have any moringa trees on your property yes. i've got a couple of moringa trees um they don't really grow well on my property there's certain trees that just don't grow well here mm -hmm. Um, they're still alive and they grow, but they don't grow like a Moringa typically grows. And part of it's because on my property, I have a lot of big oak trees. Um, mm -hmm. so basically I have this bit of a, what I call a devil's bargain. So I'm in central Florida, which is, you know, sort of semi-tropical. It's not quite it's like subtropical. It's not quite all the way tropical. So there's certain plants that really struggle to grow here. Like, you know, your, your cashews or your soursops or some exotics. But because I have the canopy of the oak trees, it's almost like a miniature greenhouse. It's a little, mini, it's a little um, okay. um, microclimate. So basically it never gets crazy as cold as the surrounding areas here. And it also mm -hmm. doesn't really get as hot as the surrounding areas here. So I have a little bit of a t of a temperature control system there. Um, only to, it's only on the margins, right? But sometimes the difference between life and death for a tropical plant are the, it's the margins. It's, it's one or two degrees, right? Um, right? So, but because of that, I don't get full light. 
I don't have any spots in my food force that are full light spots. So that's one of the issues that I deal with is that some of my trees don't grow to maximum size or grow as quickly as I'd like them to, but they don't get hit as hard by the cold. Now, do are you self-sustainable? Do you grow all the food that you eat or do you no, still go to the food shop? Not. Definitely not. You know, I tell people, you know, I don't really grow food. I grow snacks. Um, okay. You know, <laughs> We still go to the grocery store. We still eat out. We still buy food all the time, okay. you know, because it's like, you know, and when you harvest, you harvest X amount at a time. And, you know, like just because I harvest potatoes doesn't mean I want to eat potatoes for the next six months. Right. Um, right. You know, so, <laughs> and you can't really live off of mangoes and avocados for very long, you know, papayas and sugar cane, um, you know, like in terms of like food, food, Florida is not the greatest place in the world to really grow large amounts of food 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 you know it's okay it's great for growing tropicals and fruits and stuff like that but up north you can grow a lot more food and the, even their short season than you can okay. grow down here. i gotcha i just learned that if you eat mango before you go to bed it helps you sleep better and lately i've been having trouble sleeping so i i like to test it out past <laughs> two nights i've eaten mango before bed and i've slept through the night so, I mean, those are the kind of cool things that I like to learn about the foods that I'm putting in my body. Doesn't it take a long time to grow a mango to actually get the fruit of a mango? Well, there's two ways you can approach it. If you grow it from a seed, then yes, you're gonna wait like six to 10 years before you get a fruit and you're gonna get an unpredictable fruit. It may be a good one, it may be a bad one. They don't grow true to seed, which means like when you plant a mango seed of say a Julie mango, you're not getting a Julie mango, you're getting a mango that's somewhat different. Um, it may be better, it may be worse, but it's gonna take you 10 years to find out. Um, so most of the time what we do is we get a grafted tree. When you buy a tree from a nursery, it's not a seedling, it's a grafted tree. And that okay. means that that tree can produce within a year or two um, you can buy trees that are already producing. Okay. Oh, cool. I'm going to look into that. Recently, I just saw one of your videos when you were picking oranges, but you picked them not to eat them, but because you wanted to use the peels in your garden. So share a little bit about that. So orange peels um, are a, a sort of a, a, an insect repellent naturally mm -hmm. so sprinkling a few of them in your garden can help deter things like aphids or grasshoppers or you know um whatever pest is, is your main problem um and a lot of it's about confusing the insects with scent so my thing is i don't use any sort of pesticides in my garden other than neem oil if there's a problem but i don't preemptively use anything at all and right. the way that i try to control pests is to make sure that they never find the plant in the first place so one of the ways you can do that is to not grow single crops by themselves. You know, you put in, you know, onions, you put a garlic, you put basil, you put rosemary, you put, you know, um, marigolds, all kinds of plants that are going to distract and not allow an insect to hone in on your crop that you're trying to grow. So companion planting is a big thing um, that I do. Also diversity, like I don't grow in most beds. It's not going to be one thing. It's going to be a bunch of different things in the bed. And that diversity also makes it harder for pests to key in on one thing. Like if you have a bed of just, you know, cabbage, you know, then whatever is looking for cabbage, bang, is right, right there. They're going to find cabbage because it's it's a big billboard for cabbage right there. Right. Um, so, so diversity, companion planting, those are the main methods. And things like sprinkling some orange peels in there. And you can use any citrus. Um, that's mm -hmm. also helping deter their ability to find your plants. Um, and it's a bit of a repellent as well, but you just don't want to overdo it because you can end up with a little bit of acidity if you overdo it in your garden with orange peels. Um, okay. And a lot of times I'll end up, there'll be seeds in the peels too. So I get little orange trees popping up in my gardens every now and then too. That's cool. I talked to an organic farmer once and he was explaining why he doesn't use chemicals because he said, if you have a nutrient dense soil, then the plants are going to thrive. And he said, the reason why I guess, you know, there's pests that come in that eat them is because in nature, they're like the natural garbage men. 
meaning like, oh, these plants are dead. So we got to go in and clean them up. And why he never had any pests because he had this nutrient dense soil. And I thought that was amazing. When you think about that, the nature has its own way of cleaning up waste. Right. And, and it's, it's it, I don't think it's that black and white, but it's, there's something to that because plants put out a distress single when they're, when they're stressed. So they don't have to right. be dead or dying, but if they're stressed, that's what the insects can pick up on. And a lot of times they can hear because plants make noise. Um, and, and they're basically calling out and the insects keyed on that because a weakened plant is way easier for them to take down than a healthy plant that has its own defenses. God, that's so, it's like plants have consciousness. If you, if you want to look at consciousness, but they can make well, noises. And I think it's a biological well, process. I don't think, I don't think it's a conscious process though. Well, not like consciousness, like a person. Did you ever read the book, The Secret Life of Plants? No, I haven't, but I've heard of it. All right. Then I think that that should be on your homework list <laughs> is to, because it, it's a really, you know, I don't want to get into it here, but your plants actually recognize you by your vibration and your frequency. So look into that book because <laughs> that was another thing that opened my, opened my eyes to the wonder of nature. All right. So you also have um, apparel and products that you sell on your website. Be about that life apparel and garden products. So tell us why, why have you chosen hemp and bamboo clothing? Um, just for the sustainability aspect of it, you know, um, permaculture is all about sustainability. So we tried to make things with products like, like this is made from bamboo. It's a bamboo shirt here, but we have shirts that are made from hemp. We have hats that are made from bamboo. We have hemp hats as well. Um, a lot of our items are made from recycled materials as well. Um, like our hoodies are made from recycled materials. Our sun shirts are made from recycled materials. Um, so we just tried to find a line of products that was sort of um, sort of environmentally conscious because there's not really a brand that represents that. You know, there's a lot of different companies like Columbia and stuff that have certain products within right. their line that are like that. But we found that there was really a void and there was nothing really for people that were into sustainability or permaculture or, or even gardening. Like I feel like there's not really a brand that represents gardeners or home gardeners, you know? Like, um, so we kind of wanted to become the Nike of of gardening or the um i do a lot of fishing so i was at the huck of of offshore fishing i've heard so much about hemp and i don't understand i mean i've heard we can build houses um and there, there's so much more um uses for it um can you can you talk about hemp and you know i i read some stuff on your site about how um you use a lot less water when producing it and it grows faster. I don't know enough about it to right. continue. So maybe. Yeah. yeah. So the key, the key is that it can create a lot of biomass without a lot of inputs. So basically it doesn't require the amount of water that that cotton requires or anything else. Um, and it grows rapidly and it produces a lot of biomass really quickly. So you're getting a lot of material um without having to have one have a lot of land to grow it on and you don't have to have a lot of resources to put into it so environmentally it's definitely better than than most you know or fabrics that we grow or like cotton or I'm not sure what other fabrics we grow but you know we grow cotton but um yeah and same thing with bamboo bamboo is also very prolific grower it's the fastest growing plant you know, um, so you can produce a lot of it without a lot of inputs. Now, bamboo does require a little more water than 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 um, hemp does, but um, both of them are still more sustainable than um, than cotton. Yeah, I've read a lot about different um, like synthetics actually lower our immunity. Um, wearing synthetic clothing all day long you know, sleeping in sheets that are synthetic and, and things like that. I'm always looking for things that are going to build, nurture and support my body. And 
you know, my environment around me. Um, you, you've said that, and even when I asked if you would do this podcast, you said you have a lot of ideas that are not popular belief. What, what are some of those things that, um, you think <laughs> could, be, could be controversial? Well, you know, I, I think one, there's a hysteria right now. I, I feel like, um, there are a lot of social media creators that make a lot of money and um, gain a lot of popularity by scaring people about food. And I think oh. that the pendulum has gone way too far in the raw, in the opposite direction. Um, right. Yeah, sure. You, you don't eat, you know, Big Macs all day and, and drink Coke all day, right? Like, but I feel like you can find someone that will try to scare you about every food. Like, like there's like almost nothing that you can eat, you know? Um, and really, I'm a true believer that it's all about moderation and making good choices. And there's nothing that you should tell someone that they should never eat. Like as soon as someone gets on a, on a, on a video and I see them and they say, three foods you should never eat, I'm scrolling already because it's it's absurd, right? In fact, like, there may be three foods that you shouldn't eat all the time, but, but right. you know, there, there's nothing that you can't ever eat unless, unless it's poison, right? But <laughs> Right, right, of course, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I've said that a lot of times with people that, you know, we're just having discussions when they're eating and they're like, oh, I shouldn't be eating this. And I'm like, then why are you eating it? If you're not going to enjoy <laughs> it, right? So you're, exactly. if you're not going to enjoy it, then don't eat it. And then don't beat yourself up afterwards saying, oh, it was so delicious, but it was so bad for me. Well, now you're eating bad with your words, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and, and it's, it's been drummed into people's heads so much about this mm -hmm. is bad, that's bad, this is bad. And, you know, and, and people ask a lot of questions like, you know, like, why don't the watermelons have seeds anymore, right? And, you know, but I feel like so many people don't want the answer, they just want the question, right? They just want to yeah. be able to fear monger with the question, but they will never take even the slightest step towards finding out the answer, right? So watermelons that don't have seeds, all they've done is, is crossbred two watermelons to create a triploid watermelon, right? It's just, it's a natural process. They're just taking two regular watermelons and they made this watermelon now that doesn't have seeds. It's not a GMO watermelon. It's not an unhealthy watermelon. It's the same okay. as any other watermelon. It just doesn't have seeds. You know, so uh, but people students. don't want that answer. People don't want that answer. You know, I've never had a person ask that question and actually look for the answer. They don't want it. <laughs> well, I asked the question because I want to know the answer. And I'm really <laughs> glad that you said that because um, someone was saying, well, you know, a seedless watermelon is GMO. And I'm like, why is it GMO? But you just answered there are no, the there question. There are no GMO watermelons. There's very few GMO fruits that are available. Most of the GMO that you'll consume will be in products like corn and wheat and things like that. But in terms of fruits you go in the supermarket, there's it's very hard to find anything that's GMO because there's not that many products that are available as GMOs in a market. Um, yeah. you know, even like things like bananas, like bananas don't have seeds anymore, but no one's crying about that, right? <laughs> you know. I I'm, I'm think they're happy that there are no seeds. Right. Speaking of, can you eat the seeds of a banana if you get a seeded banana? Um, I, I think it'd probably be like eating a marble. I don't, I've seen a banana seed. And it's it's a hard little rock, and it's it's about almost as big as a marble. But um, oh you know, and, and bananas still have vestigial seeds. Like they still have seeds. Right. They're not That's viable right. seeds, but they've been bred out to the point where they're they're essentially no seeds. But, um, you know, it, it's funny because people make that exception for bananas all the time, but they don't really make that exception for anything else. Weird. Have you ever been to Miami Fruit down in Miami? Have you heard of them? Fruit. Um, is that the one that sends the fruit boxes out? Yeah. Uh, you know, I used to order fruit from them. I used to order fruit from them um, way back, yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking of doing that because I want to expand my palate and try some of these more exotic fruits that aren't exotic in other countries. 
You know what I mean? Right. Um, um, I heart fruit box. I heart fruit box is another company that does it. And um, mm -hmm. I've ordered a couple of things from them. The only thing I didn't like about Miami fruit was that it was almost impossible to reach a human. So to cancel the, the subscription was really, really difficult. Oh, wow. Okay, well, good to know. There, there's another guy I follow on Instagram who eats fruit in all his videos. And I guess he does a collaboration with Miami Fruit. So that's the only reason why okay. I knew. Um, and one last question, because we're actually almost out of time, and I really enjoyed our conversation, is you have something called Fire Talk TV. And what I, I know it's you, a bunch of guys sitting around a fire talking, but what is the purpose of Fire Talk TV? So Fire Talk TV is a um, like a talk show that I'm the host of. Uh, me and a friend of mine who's a film producer, we sort of had this idea because I used to have a book club here and we used to like, we used to a bunch of men and we'd, we'd, we'd discuss a topic or a book or whatever. And he was almost like, you know, we should be filming this. This would be great. People would love to see this. So finally we decided to put it together and we filmed a bunch of episodes last year, um, but the quality wasn't great. So we got a real professional film crew in now and we've put out two episodes. The third episode is, is, is already ready to release, but we're gonna film the fourth before we release the third. Um, but people seem to be responding really well to it. They enjoy it. It's on Fire Talk TV one on YouTube. So it's, um, I'm really proud of it. It's, it's, it, I think it's a really entertaining um, product that we're producing there. Uh, but do you have a main purpose? Is it um, just to have, um, you know, kind of intelligent conversations? Are you looking to help people with mental health or, you know, just living a you better know, life? I think it's mostly entertainment. Like it's it's for people to be able to relate and look at this and say, hey, you know, cause it's, a, it's, a, it's like guys from different walks of life. So like pretty much, you know, you have people with very differing opinions on that show. And, um, you know, everyone I think can find the guy that's them, you know? Um, oh. And for women, you know, they watch the show too. And, you know, it's an insight, you know, cause you know, it's unscripted, yeah. it's guys talking the way guys talk. And, um, you know, so for a lot of people, it's a, it's a peek behind the curtain there. And it's not like a bunch of celebrities that have, you know, media images to, to preserve and stuff. It's just regular guys right. talking. Right. So. I love it. It sounds great. Uh, well, you know, we're out of time, but do you have any parting words for someone who wants to pursue the perma permaculture life? <laughs> I would say, you know, get it in the ground. Let me tell you one quick quote. Um, I, I read, I used to read a lot of Stephen King books and he'd say people would come up to him all the time and ask him, they'd say, oh, I want to be a writer so bad. And he would say, well, what's stopping you? The pen or the paper, you know? Like you can do this, like seeds are cheap. You can go out and you can grow stuff. You can grow them in pots, whether you have a balcony, whether you have a windowsill, you can grow stuff, you know, pretty much almost anybody has access to be able to grow something. So get stuff in the ground, learn about it as you go. I love it. Thank you so much, Andre. You really are a pleasure. And I am so grateful that you took time out of your extremely busy day <laughs> um, to have a conversation with me and possibly inspire someone to get their hands dirty and to get some seeds in the ground. Thanks so much for being here. And anybody you else, me. you're welcome. Uh, and I hope to come visit you in Orlando. It sounds like um, an exciting Definitely. adventure. And if anybody else is looking to learn more about taking healthy back or work with me, you can go to Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, taking healthy back with Maria, because everything there is teaching you how to overcome stress, overcome an over-processed, over-medicated life with new ideas and new things for you to explore and experiment. You only have one life, so let's live the best life that you can. And I will see you next time on Taking Healthy Back with Maria. Thank you so much. 
This has been Taking Healthy Back with your host, Maria. Tune in each week as Maria will empower you to put your wellness in your control. Right here, Fridays, noon Eastern, on the Bold Brave TV Network.